All right, so yesterday we focused on factoring. We focused on being able to factor polynomials that were of degree greater than two. We focused on factoring polynomials that had more than four terms. And our goal at the end of the day was to be able to find all of the factors and put it in simplest form. There is a new technique we're going to talk about today. So in chapter five, we focused primarily on quadratics and we focused on quadratics in standard form. So what we're going to do today is focus on rewriting a polynomial in standard form like a quadratic. So ax squared plus bx plus c is considered standard form of a quadratic. And then if you have something like ax to the fourth plus bx squared plus c and or a to x to the sixth plus bx cubed plus c, what we're going to do today is rewrite them as a quadratic. So we're going to take out this x to the fourth and we're going to replace it with a u squared so that it looks like a quadratic. So let's look at our first example, which is example five. So we have 150 n to the eighth plus 40 n to the fourth minus 15. So actually, before I even start this problem, the very first thing I notice is that there is a GCF of 5. So I can actually start by factoring out a 5 from each term. And then what I'm going to do now is say, okay, n to the 8th and n to the 4th, they're times 2, that middle term. So now, anytime you have something to the 8th and to the 4th, they're 4 or 2 times each other from the middle to the end, so you can rewrite it as a quadratic. So we're going to say that u is equal to n to the 4th, so you pick the middle term, and this now becomes 5. 30 u, which is n to the 4th, so if that's n to the 4th, to get to the 8th, I would square u, plus 8u, minus 3. And now what you're going to do is factor as if this was a quadratic. So you would start with your factor by grouping and your magic x and say, okay, 30 times negative 3 gives me negative 90. And then the middle term is 8. So two numbers that multiply to negative 90 and add to 8.
any guesses? Is it maybe not factorable? So if you're working your way through, and um, you're going through all your roots and your factors, and you're saying, okay, it's just not factorable, then that might also be the case where we're just kind of done and it's in quadratic form. We are going to look at an example after this one that is factorable, but there are no factors. And if you aren't sure, remember that you can always, or if you struggle to find your factors, you can find the roots of a quadratic using quadratic formula. So even if this didn't factor and you wanted to find its roots, you could use quadratic formula. You could also use quadratic formula to help you do factoring in reverse. So sometimes if something's factorable and you struggle to factor it, then what you can do is take the quadratic formula and even just get the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4 times a times c. Find out what your discriminant is. And in this case, the discriminant is 424. Well, 424 is positive, so that means you have potentially two roots that are real, but 424 isn't a perfect square. So since it isn't a perfect square, it meant this wasn't factorable. So we know that there are two real roots, but that they're not factorable. So we have 8 and 3 as our powers. Remember that the middle power needs to be half the largest power at the beginning. So this one cannot be written in quadratic form. So that one cannot be written in quadratic form. So then in example 6, it says to solve the equation in quadratic form. So we have a 4 and a 2. 2 is half of 4. So yes, this can be written in quadratic form. So we're going to take out the x's and replace them with a u. You're always going to replace the u with the x on the middle term. So in this case, we're going to say that u is equal to x squared. So this can be rewritten as 18u, which is x squared. So you would have to square that, minus 21u plus 3. 18, 21, and 3 all have a GCF of 3. So you can take out a GCF. So we get 6u squared minus 7u plus 1. So again, um, what we're going to do now is try to factor that. So in order to factor it, you're going to multiply the first and the last. So 6 times 1 and negative 7. So you need two numbers that multiply to a positive 6 and add to a negative 7, which means both numbers need to be negative. So that's going to be negative 6 and negative 1. You replace your middle term. To factor by grouping. So 
So in factored form, we have 6u minus 1 times u minus 1 times 3. Now this is factored form with respect to u, not x. Our goal is to solve for x. So what we're going to do is take our zero product property, which says you set each factor equal to zero. So that's 3 equals 0, 6u minus 1 equals 0, 10u minus 1. equals 0. We know that 3 never equals 0, so we don't have to worry about the GCF. Over here we get 6u equals 1. Divide both sides by 6, and we get u equals 1 6. Over here we get u equals positive 1, but you need to remember that our problem started not as u's, but as x's. So everywhere you have a u, we're going to replace it with x squared. So to get your final answer, you're going to say x squared equals 1 6 and x squared equals 1. And then in order to solve for x, you have to take the square root of both sides. Now, when you take the square root of a number, it gets a plus or minus. So we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 6, and x equals plus or minus 1. So what you'll notice is that gives me a grand total of four answers. I have 1, 2, 1, 2. This started as x to the 4th, so an x to the 4th should have 4 total solutions. So we are good. Does everybody feel okay with that? Do you want to do another one together? Do you want me to leave it up on the board while you start your first homework problem so you don't have to flip back and forth? Okay, so then yesterday we just did the factoring in the homework. Today you're going to go and do the quadratic part. So you're going to pick up with 30.